Back in 2011, we released a study uh, under the name Envisional, uh, which found out that 23.8% of worldwide bandwidth was being used for infringing content. The absolute amount of bandwidth being used for infringing content grew by 160% over the period between 2010 and 2012. For the 2013 study, we're looking at a much wider range of data points. As well as looking at the amount of infringing bandwidth that we see online, we're also trying to estimate the number of users who are involved in accessing infringing content on a regular basis. And we're focused on three key regions, which is North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. So in the 2013 study, what we're looking at is any type of infringing content at all. Film content, television, books, software, games, music. The only thing we're not looking at is pornography. It's often very difficult to work out whether a piece of pornography is infringing or not. So in November 2011, we saw 297 million infringing users. By January 2013, that figure has grown to 327 million unique internet users who are accessing infringing content at least once a month. In 2010, we measured 3,690 petabytes of infringing content. It's the absolute amount of data that was being infringed. By 2012, that had grown to 9,570 petabytes. A petabyte is 1,000 terabytes. Terabyte is 1,000 gigabytes and a gigabyte is a thousand megabytes. So you can see just how much content we're talking about. At present, there are three major types of piracy ecosystem that are used worldwide. They're BitTorrent, video streaming, and direct download cyber lockers. So BitTorrent works, a user will typically go to a BitTorrent portal site. They'll download a tiny little file from there which uh, links to a particular movie or a particular television show. They'll load that into their BitTorrent client and they then join a swarm of other BitTorrent users, all of whom possess that particular piece of content and they're all sharing little bits of data between themselves. So eventually the user is able to download the entire show in one go. The vast majority of BitTorrent sites make money through advertising. Uh, you go to any of these sites and you'll see banner adverts, pop-up adverts. They're usually replete with adverts of all kinds, typically for things like casinos, dating sites, and download managers. On the infringing video streaming ecosystem, what you typically find is a large number of linking sites which tend to index and collate content. A user will go to one of these sites, search for the latest film or television episode they're seeking, and the site then pushes them towards a hosting site, often called a video streaming cyber locker, which actually hosts the video content that the user can then click and stream direct to their computer. So most video streaming sites uh, have a lot of advertising on them, just as the BitTorrent sites do. But some of the video streaming sites also offer a premium subscription. A user pays a fee, it's anywhere between $5 and $10 a month, and for that, they're able to access the video without any advertising or more video over a particular period of time. So the piracy sites which we focused on for this study are very much driven by profit. They're generating revenue from advertising. They're generating revenue, uh, in some cases, from premium subscription fees. And obviously, when enforcement shuts these sites down or shuts down their payment processes, it's hitting directly at their revenue streams. So obviously what we've seen over the last two years is a significant rise in the amount of pirated content, the amount of infringement which is taking place across the internet. Obviously that's going to have a big impact on people who work within the creative industries. If that content is being produced, is being infringed on a regular basis, there's going to be less people purchasing the content, less people buying or renting or leasing the content, possibly less films and television episodes being made further down the line.